This is an Ellis Mowers and More small engine repair. Stay connected on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers and More. Comments or questions? Leave them below or email me, ellis at ellismowers.com. Parts used in today's repair are found using the links in the description below. And as always, like and subscribe for more small engine content. On today's small engine repair, we have a commercial grade Toro push mower in here. Um, I got $100 into this thing. I think I can at least double, maybe triple my money on this. Hopefully it doesn't need a lot to get going. It's an amazing shape. Um, got two issues. One of them I'm a little concerned about. Um, one, the first issue, which is the one that should be easy to fix, is uh, the running issue. I think the carbs just got some junk in it. Just need to uh, clean up the uh, jet. Probably be good on that. We'll do that first. The second issue, which I'm a little wary about, is the self-propel is not working. Now, I don't know if there's issues with the gears inside or if it's just the shift lever, but it's not even trying to like do anything. So it's almost like, a, I almost feel like it's like perpetually stuck in neutral or something. So if we can get that sorted out, that's going to be a huge, especially if we don't have to pay, you know, to buy any parts or anything or swap a transmission out or something along those lines. Uh, it did have a shop tag on it, and I was told it needed a new transmission when I bought it. But this is something new, new and different for the channel, and uh, something new and different for me. I don't know how to work on something if I don't have experience, so we're going to give it a shot here. Commercial grade Toro, super nice machine. I think he said this was like a $1,500 machine new. I don't have the bag for it or anything, but still... It's worth probably every bit of 250 to 300 if I can get it going again. We're going to see what we can do, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with the running issue. Hopefully this is not going to be too big of a deal. 10 millimeters to get the air filter housing off. The air, the air filter itself, you just have to twist, twist off. And this should come off now, yes. Uh, let me see what we have going on here. Hope this whole side thing don't have to come off. Oh, it's the breather hose back there. Let me grab the breather hose. So the breather hose has got it. There we go. Much better. So... In order to get this car off, shouldn't, hopefully it's not bad here. Just the thing is, it's got some junk in it we gotta get out. And I think it just slides out just like this. Excellent. So choke, we're gonna get that off. Let's see, choke. Come on. So the choke and the throttle both have springs. And the throttle spring will get that off as well. Get the fuel line off.
I mean, the guy who had this kept this up in really good condition. I know he used it commercially, but he kept it up really good. Um, we're going to get this on the carb stand. Just got some junk in. I think we just need to give it a quick little spritz with some carb spray, and that will probably get us back operational again on the running side. All right, on the little tray here, cleaned it off a little bit. 10 millimeter. Just pop, look at that junk in here. Ooh, that varnish. I'm sure we just got a clogged jet right there. Um, like I said, just a bunch of varnish, which uh, actually isn't a bad thing. I am going to get this gasket out of here so that we don't ruin it trying to get this off. So get that out of the way. Carb spray, where are you? Probably just old gas, honestly. Spray you through here. So we're getting good spraying action right there. We hit all the holes on the top here. I don't even think I gotta take the float off. That's not a hole. Spraying good. Could have been just really old gas causing this, so um like I said we're we're good on that end. Just need to basically just spray through here. Give it a quick wipe down. I'm just gonna put it back together, guys. Don't forget the gasket. Um I'm gonna put it back on the machine and uh we'll see what's going on again we had some pet hair and stuff here too so um, yeah we'll see what's going on I'll put it like i said put it back on the machine just make sure that your springs go where they're supposed to and the throttle the throttle spring is going to go in this little uh little groove here the choke spring actually goes inside the same piece as the arm and and just slide it back on and we should be good all right guys so hopefully we're running good now uh, it's a little tricky because it's that two-step handle up there, so we'll see. You can see it's a little smoky because it probably has not been running a long time. The tag on the handle said 2019, so it's probably four years removed from uh, being in service. What I'm curious about is this transmission. I really, really hope that we can figure this thing out. Because... I'm gonna be sad. And I can't get this sorted. Just gonna move it out of the way for right now. The issue is it's hard because you've gotta like 
and like I said, it's that two-step handle, so I gotta like halfway pull it back, and then when I pull it all the way, that's when the self propel comes in, but it's not coming in right now, so who knows, guys? We're gonna find out, though. unfortunate though because transmission's bad in it it's like I don't know how much transmission would cost on this what extent do I get to rebuild it I think what I extent I am about to go to though is I am going to take off this uh, top pulley so let me grab what I need to for that so we're gonna get back into this Uh, we have to take these two three eighths off again. You have to take this off of the slot there. You some might have to screw unscrew this. That takes this bracket off. I think we can get that bracket off. Yes. Again, just taking the belt off is really easy too. I've already done this, and it's frustrating, but hopefully. This is the last time I have to open this up. Usually I don't bother fixing self-propel mowers, but this one deserves it, I think. It's just those six bolts holding on the transmission, and then there's a pin here that we've got to take out. in order to get this piece off here. Let me grab some screwdrivers. All right, so let's see if we can get that off. There's the pin out. Just slide this little rod out as well. Just kind of have to wiggle it. Kind of a weird way to do it. There we go. And then this whole top piece should just come off. Shouldn't have to take this pulley off. There we are. So that reveals everything that you need to see in here. So there's the shaft, the main gear shaft right there. It doesn't feel like it's got a bunch of wear on it. What I saw had the most wear on it was actually, the, let's pull this shaft or pull this gear assembly up here. I'm trying not to mess it up too bad. It's just a grease mess, y'all. A greasy mess is all this is. I just have to pull this up out of here. 
this is the whole gear shift assembly here and oh so that's that I've already attempted to repair this once it didn't work so it's the main drive gear that I'm having issues with which is that big one that y'all saw we gotta clean it whoop, clean it up off again don't want to lose all my stuff here like I said it's a greasy mess I haven't emphasized that enough but I'm gonna get the new gear and kind of show you the difference I hopefully I can see a difference in the wear between this gear and the new gear like I said hopefully that's the issue that we have with this machine and hopefully we'll be getting back on here in just a second so there's the old one on the right the new ones on the left I can't get down to show y'all the difference between the two very well I think there's a washer on the back side of this so let me see if I can get that off really quickly but here is the difference and it's just a very minuscule amount you see where these gears are kind of ground off a little bit they're not as sharp I'm hoping that that is all that's going on here you can kind of see it right there too hopefully more if you're over on this side so what I'm gonna do y'all saw how I put it took it off I'm gonna do my best to put it back together like that too it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle so if y'all don't mind bearing with me we're gonna go ahead and see if we can take care of this while y'all are with me here so what I have done we're gonna look and just see how this goes back on again real quick so it goes on like this and then the shaft the gear shaft goes over in here so I'm wondering if the gears just weren't meshing very well with the um, with the gearbox. This is just a mess trying to get this back on. This will get greased. Um, how does this get on? There's a keyway that it's got to go into. Right there. And then there was like something that kind of fell off whenever I had it last time like this. And I'm thinking it was some sort of spacer. So what I've done is I've got a couple of washers here to space it back. This did work briefly when I tried this last time. And what the issue is now, I've got to get the caps back on here. I feel like I'm missing something though. Oh, I know what I'm I know what it is. It's the space that I need in between the gearbox here. Silly me. Alright. Let's see what we can do. This, like I said, is always the hardest part of this. We'll get underneath the transmission here we're gonna see if we can shove this in because all the gears look good it's where where it's slipping is in between everything so there we go so we've got that slid back down in there the tricky part here is this getting it lined up with well, we didn't really take that off this time. But getting it lined up with the hole that we need it to in order for this all to still work. So, that's still clipped in. I think, are we still working the gears right there? I think we are. I hope we are. That's the hardest part is just trying to get that 
gear selector lined up. We are going to grease this. We have a grease fitting up top here. We have a ton of grease down in the drive shaft already. I could pre-grease it. But we have a greaser right here that will grease what it needs to grease, I believe. Uh, so here we are. Let's do this. Come on now. Ooh. So this is not working very well. Like I said, this is by far the hardest portion of it is trying to get this all back on and situated and all this other stuff. Let's see. Coming through. And I've put it on. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make 100% sure that I've got everything right here. If y'all don't mind, cut the camera off. Um, but that's how I put it on. I'm going to make sure all this link it links back up like it's supposed to and get back with y'all in just a second. So that's the main gist of it, guys. Um, this is by far the hardest thing to get in right there. What I did, you have to, so that you'll see that if you look at that previous clip, there's like a little washer that has a little split and a little slot in it. It's about right here. And what that is, is that's kind of the gear selector. So this rod goes into that gear selector, um, into the slot of that gear selector, and then you just kind of have to work it as you try and work this transmission back in, or transaxle, or whatever you want to call it, back in, so that you can get the different shift uh, gear speeds here. So I have done that, and we are putting it back together. Hopefully this new gear is all that this machine needs in order for the self-propel to work good again. I'm really hoping that that's all we've got to do to it. So I'm going to see if I can pull this up and get the pin in. But you have to put this pin back in. Again, it's... fine art apparently to do this <laughs> but you get that pin back in and then we're just going to put the um, bolts back on for the self propel transmission here like I said hopefully that's all we've got to do here so it's these six bolts I'll, I'll let y'all stick with me for this because I want to do my best to show y'all this is a this is a difficult how-to video to do just because of the process of this and just getting everything in that slot getting all the gears right and getting everything in that slot and hopefully what I've done is shown y'all to the best of my ability what that looks like as always if you got any questions I can do my best to answer them So the transmission sealed. We, I made sure to put a generous amount of grease on that gear too that I just put in. So what we have also is this that we have to put on as well as this. This is your belt keeper. That'll go in first. Fine, fine operation right here, ain't it? I need one more bolt that has decided to elude me. Somehow, some way. Okay. Well, let's not put that slide all the way down yet. That'd be kind of dumb, wouldn't it? Okay, I need to find that one last bolt because y'all know. You can't do anything without losing a bolt. Here we are. Put that bolt back in. We can put this belt back on too. Just put it inside the keepers. It really isn't too difficult to do that. 
with it in place. I'm just going to kind of do that right there. All right, guys. So, um, again, I just got to get this pin in. Once I do that, then I'm going to test it out and hopefully that gear fixes the issues that this self propel had. I kind of put a little bit of money on the line for this one to see if I could get it fixed. And uh, I know I can get my money back out of it even if I don't. I just kind of hate, hate it to not, to not get fixed because I always like trying to learn and grow in my abilities of small engines. I will get that pin back in, test it out, let y'all know what happens. So there it is. Um, after I have cleaned everything up, I hope I've done my best to show y'all what went on with this and uh, hopefully y'all have a, a good idea of how to fix it. It's kind of hard to show whenever you're doing it for the first time and um, that shifter by far is the hardest thing to get in. There's a slot in there that you think it goes in but it doesn't. It kind of goes in this little area on this side of the slot so that it can lever can move back and forth but then the little clamp portion of the um, shifter goes in that little spacer washer that I mentioned earlier. Uh, a plus and a minus. A plus is that the self propel is working again. I just cut my entire front yard with it without issue. However, the main drive gear is not the only one that had the issue, unfortunately. Um, gear number one, which is the slowest, which is granny gear basically, is uh, slipping. But two and three are working excellent so it's gonna be what it's gonna be on this i'll show you it working and we'll just kind of go down the driveway and i'll show you that it's pulling me on all that stuff So that's everything on this. I think we're done with it. Um, like I said, I cut a good half hour or so with it before. Uh, and I, had, I didn't have any issues or any changes or anything along those lines. So I feel confident selling it like this. I will have to disclose that uh, first gear does not work, but that gear, that main drive gear that I showed y'all did so um i don't believe that the main drive gear is the issue anymore i just think it's those first gears uh the first gear uh situation isn't working like it's supposed to uh, i'm not going to go through another an entire gear set on this machine unfortunately even though this is a commercial grade mower probably worth in gr in good condition with everything working somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four hundred dollars um, I'm probably gonna have that much in parts in it um, uh, after I order all the other gears for it because I just replaced the whole gear set basically and uh, for somebody like me who's gonna resell this uh, just really isn't worth the money especially since 
uh, whoever can use it is probably never going to use number one speed as it is. They're probably going to be using two and three all the time. So it's kind of almost a little bit of a waste in my mind. But um, it's fairly quiet. It still makes a little bit of noise in second and third gear. But um, again, I don't know how many hours this thing has on it. So this gearbox could have a lot of hours on it as it is. It was taken really good care of, although I do know it was used commercially for a good little while. Uh, and the reason why it was parked was because of the self-propel issues. So that's it on this. I'm going to just run it up and down the driveway a couple more times to make sure that it's not going to get any worse on me. Take some pictures, list it, probably in the 2 to 250 range. Just make my cut of uh, the profits off of it and uh, roll on to the next one. So thanks again, guys. Um, if there's something I'm missing on this gearbox or if you have any questions, I can do my best to answer them. This is just a hard video for me to film just because of the, the uh, nature of trying to put everything back together correctly and sometimes it takes a couple of times to get it right. So um, like I said, the hardest thing is to just get it, get all that stuff smushed back in there and then get that gear selector in a place where it slides up through that hole so that you can get the selector arm on it so that you can put the pin in it and select the gears on it again. So that's what it is. I appreciate y'all watching. Thanks for coming along this journey with me on this commercial Toro. Getting the self propel well, 66% working again. So y'all take care and I'll catch you on the next one.